Hey everybody, welcome back to Blacktop Banter. My friend here and I were in a uh, video conference last night and Roland, you can't let me say um, it's hashtag can't say um, I can't say um, especially in the podcast, but I'm gonna try not to, but we were in a, we were in a video conference last night and uh, our conversation led into this morning as well. And Roland is putting together a unit, a seal coat unit and, or buying a seal coat unit. However, but the question was about um, a trailer unit and we are hopefully getting into our first actual real trailer unit we have had another one before but uh, actually manufactured trailer unit this year but I, I now with us kind of being on quarantine I don't really know how soon that's going to happen but um, the question was would x amount of gallons be okay on this trailer well most of the time on a tandem trailer um, well I'll let you introduce yourself first Roland and then we'll get talking but why don't you tell us about yourself your business where you're from man sure yeah I'm from uh, Kingston Ontario uh, I come from the east coast of Canada, so if you hear an accent, then that's basically it, really, not the Ontario accent. I'm starting my business this year, so it's going to be called the uh, Astral Maintenance Group, and um, just looking at as much information as I can get to, uh, to get something going here. So yeah. I've been basically watching every video I can find, all the information online I can find, and so just going yeah, trying to get the boat closer to the dock before you jump in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, you know, that's probably one of the best bets, man, because some people think they know and they just jump in and stop doing this, jump right into it. And then you got to scramble to kind of figure some stuff out. So you're doing a, you're doing the right move that way. But I don't want to I didn't want to jump the gun without you at least being able to introduce yourself and what we're doing. And uh, I get this question a lot, man. Well, you know, how can I put together an outfit for X amount of dollars? Will this work is this the right unit is this not the right unit and there's so many choices and so many variables of ways that we can do this um i thought that it would be a good idea for roland to be like you know this is what i want this is how i want this to work what units will work how should we do this what do i need what can i kind of skip on and wait a little bit and we got into a conversation that was starting to last <laughs> your text a half an hour 45 minutes and i thought we should just do it for video and hopefully some guys can find this useful. So why don't you, why don't we start with Roland, you can ask, you know, tell, tell me what kind of trailer you were looking to get and what gallons of unit would be supported on it. So the trailer, maybe 230, 300 gallons is what I'm looking at starting. I want to be able to do, go as long as possible uh, in a day without having to refill or whatever. And, uh, you know, look professional. I didn't want to go with a tote right away. I have some money that I have available that I can go into a tank unit. So I wanted to spend it on that as well. And um, that's about it really. Yeah. So, I mean, you had some money to start, so we're not yeah. talking about buckets. We're that's not right. talking about a tote and a hose and a broom and you can get started that way. But if you have some money to get started and invest right away, why not right. go look yeah. professional, looking great. And I what the uh, one thing I know, usually the trailers, the tandem axle trailers, depending on the weight of the axle, some of the light ones are usually 3,500 pounds per axle. And you can get beefier ones that are 7,000 pound axles that will take you up to 14,000 pounds in weight. But you have to include the, the weight of the trailer and stuff too as well. But for that, you know, what did you tell me the weight you figured was for the one that you were looking at? You were looking at a plastic, or I mean, I'm sorry, uh, a, a manufactured tank with uh, pump and uh, plastic pump and you know yeah. pump and that kind of stuff. three thousand pounds fully fully loaded. loaded yeah so i mean if that information is right and close to it you'll still have plenty of weight you know to do what you need to do on the axles and i i would assume even at 300 gallons you're going to be you're going to be fine i mean if you had 500 gallons and you doubled from the 243 or whatever you're looking at you'd still only be at six thousand pounds you yeah. know so you'd still have some room on that trailer you'd still have some room but the the thing is if we're going to add you know a melter to it if we're going to carry rubber on it if we're going to do whatever you know then you might want to be thinking about a five five hundred gallon unit how much weight excess weight i'm going to have on it the thing is most tanks you can bump up from 300 to 500 gallons manufactured units for hundreds of dollars most of the time you know so i mean it's sometimes it's like, well, how much can I put on there? You know what I mean? Or how much can we carry? How much can we do? Especially if we're trying to get it going right away. 
So we, we kind of figured, you know, in our conversation, you and I, that, hey, the weight isn't going to be an issue, but if we're going to spend X amount of dollars to start, you want to be not so much frugal, but efficient with that X amount of dollars. So how can we make sure we're getting the best unit that makes us the most efficient or put together for X amount of dollars? And that's where I started chiming in with some experience. And uh, we started talking about components and filter pots and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, why don't we, why don't I ask you, Roland, what your main objective is with your unit that you're looking to put together right away? Sure. Um, so to start off with, at first I looked at uh, getting a tank and putting it on my truck. So I have a 150 short box and I thought maybe this could fit here or maybe I could do this. And it's my daily driver though. So like I need to take this thing everywhere I go and I don't really want the whole system on there. So talking to a bunch of people, they said, you know, the trailer system is the way to go for short. So get a trailer and get your stuff on there. So, so basically I want to have everything ready to go in a trailer, hitch onto it and then go find some work. Okay. And then what about the unit? Like, what are, you know, are you looking to do, uh, you know, are you, look, obviously people want commercial, you know, contractors want commercial work. It's just, there's no question about it, but you want to be sure that um, if you do get the commercial work that you can do it efficiently as your uh, counterparts. I That's guess, right. So in my area, I have my subdivision alone and the West end of Kingston, there's like 3000 houses mm -hmm. here that are like between five and 10 years old max. And for most of them, the driveways are pristine. Like there's no cracks, there's no nothing. They're just gray and they need some, need some TLC there. So that's my, my first, uh, my first goal was to go that's find your target. Place. That's your target customer yeah. face right away. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Easy I, as possible. Yeah. I think, I think yeah, that's a great target base. That's where we started as well. And you don't really need the biggest, best flashiest thing to start doing that. And if you take care of your unit, that's the nice thing is it does have a resale value. So, I mean, if you get to where you want to swap out, you can resale, or if you want to buy another unit, you can keep that other unit and it adds to your gallons. You know, if you get another truck or you need help or you're doing commercial work later on, um, it does help out that way. That's kind of what has stranded us is both of my units were, are now on trucks. So for me, if we have to hook on to a, something like a, our crack sitting machine i don't really have anywhere for the crack filler to go so we're looking to take a tank unit off of one of those trucks and buy this trailer unit and then be able to use the bed of the truck and everything else for what we're doing but in your case where it's your daily driver for me you know that makes perfect sense we're going to buy a trailer we're going to put everything on there be ready to go when we got to go to work we're going to hitch on and go so i think we started talking about once you know how for, for what we're spending, where's the best bang for our buck? And right. I know I don't really fully understand the conversion rate between dollars and loonies and, <laughs> and everything else, but I have been to Canada, so I know we're not too far off for the most part. But we started talking about, uh, you know, manufactured ones versus buying a used one or how we can put it together. The, the, Unit itself, when you look at ones that are manufactured and you don't know the components yeah. or what's missing or what can be added or everything else, it can get confusing. And you think, well, how the hell am I even going to build one? That's right. I don't know what this is or that is or anything like that. So I think, I think we should talk about the bare bones of what a unit can consist of and then maybe what it should consist of, you know, what would be ideal for efficiency and less headaches and then all the bells and whistles as well. So I'll start with probably where I think you were looking for. And that is we have a tank, no agitation. Mm -hmm. The agitation is actually just the return that goes into the top and you're trying to mix it that way. And there's no filter pot, none of that. We're just using the pump to pump straight sealer into this pump, into the return, into the top. And at first glance, we think, well, man, it's mixing up like crazy in there. You know, it's a, it's, there's a party going on if we got that thing fully loaded. But the, I, the, the, the harsh truth of that is, is that the aggregates and some of the components of the sealer won't get mixed up off the bottom and keep your emulsion going. And that's major key because the denser products will fall to the bottom eventually over time. And that can be clay. It can be cracked slate could be whatever and it will build up and 
you'll end up trying to open that lid, get a shovel to move this stuff around that you can't even really mix with a shovel. You can get yeah. it off there and unclog that hose a little bit. But once material dries on the sides of the walls and that falls in, that doesn't mix back in with the sealer. Those are hard particles that are in there. And you soon you'll be pumping that through your pump if you don't have a filter pot. So that's kind of the basic thing. And we've looked at some of those, right? Yeah. And I mean, some of those ones are like, well, we can get in, you know, for X amount of dollars through this company, or you can get in through X amount of dollars through this company. And it might be close, might be a comparison, but for a little bit more, maybe we can unplumb what they have there and add a filter pot to it. And, you know, some, even the filter pot pots aren't created equally, you know, so some of those are plastic ones with tiny baffles inside. And I've seen those things just under suction, just completely shut, shut down, you know, because they're, they're full, they'll, you'll end up having to buy a new one. The ones that we use are steel filter pots. So usually two gallon or gallon, I guess. And they have a two inch plumb this way and two inch plumb this way. The sealer goes in, into a basket that's in there, a steel basket with the small drilled holes. You don't want the fence looking holes. They're just too big. You'll get clogs at the spray tip. When that basket clogs up, you'll know. You lose pressure. You end up shutting everything down and opening the valves, then shutting the valves, taking that filter basket off, which is never fun on the job. We try to clean it every day when we get back to, to our spot. Take that thing out and you'll see just clay and gunk and dried up pieces chunked in there. Dump that sucker out, clean it out with a hose. <clears throat> I've got messy doing that before rolling. Like I took screwdrivers and like really scraped stuff off the sides and things. Throw that back in and get started. To me, I've, I've used them without filter baskets and man, two months into the year, you know, when things were going great and I'm like, Hey, I guess I don't even need a filter basket. All of a sudden we'll get on a parking lot and the clogs at the tip will be nonstop. Every 12 feet you'll be stopping. Then you figure how the hell do I finish this job that I've started? Cause it's going to be forever. And I had one that took me 12 hours that we should have been done with in an hour. And it was just nonstop me picking the end to get this job done. It was a commercial job. So the idea is a filter basket for a few hundred dollars. You can find them all over online. Get one, you know, ask me which one and I'll, I'll try to point you in the right direction of what you want. I don't really care about the brand as much as what it is. And um, I think that's one of your major keys rolling with whatever you decide, get a filter pot on it. You know, even if it is the one where it's just agitating through the top, get a filter pot on it, man, because, and, and plumb that filter pot before your pump. So, However, you can take that off there, run a plastic hose with some elbows to it, mm -hmm. get it before there, man, because, you know, if, if you're saying I'm going to do this on the weekends or I'm going to do this when I'm not working my regular job or whatever, you only have so much amount of time, man. So we want to make sure that we're being efficient. So I hope that was informative as far as that piece. And then we can go back to the tanks, you know, and the tanks manual agitation that's how we started, man. So, I mean, even both of ours now, one has gear reduction agitation. So we're not doing like the Vikings, you know, rowing back over back in the day, but we're doing small cranks. And um, the other unit has a full one still Viking, you know, Viking style dude rowing over. But now our one that we're buying is hydraulic agitation. We're going to flip the switch and go and we can agitate it in, in place while we're cleaning and do whatever. So even we aren't there yet, but I know I want to get there to that one. And some guys jump right in and buy that thing right away. We don't run that route here. I try to keep everything as debt free as possible for as long as we can. And I think that we're going to end up enjoying that unit a lot better that we own it, you know? So for me, I think as far as gallon wise, you know, what are you looking for Roland? Are you looking for, do you want to maximize that gallons right away or do you want to be as efficient and as good as so i want to maximize the gallons right away i want a unit that i can grow with uh-huh but you know stay for a while if i get a second truck or i get a, get a friend or whatever want something that's going to be enough that we can go out and, and be done for the entire day yeah so i mean for me i would think um you know the 300 if you can save money if you only have x amount of dollars that you can save money at a 300 gallon unit and it allows you to buy a filter pot to put on there, or maybe it allows you to beef up to manual agitation with a full sweep. Mm -hmm. well, full sweep is a, a big deal because if you can get full sweep along the edges of your tank, you don't have as many of those pieces that are bigger falling in there. You still will get some. 
even off the lid or wherever, but it won't be as bad. I think you're, you're going down the right course by, especially by asking questions, man, and trying to get that boat as close to the dock as possible. The next step obviously is a fully manufactured unit, hydraulic agitation, electric hose reel, or, you know, all the bells and whistles, the lights and everything. But I would build up to that because if there's been competition around me that have tried to start and bought everything they could, and they were just equity deep and couldn't get within the two years climbing out of all that equity, you know, that the, the debt and it, it was hard for them. So I actually think, and this is what I have always done. I've never bought a unit manufactured from a company completely together and it came together. I've always kind of been able to figure out the components that I would really prefer and that I need for us to get through a year. We've always made it through our summers and not had any issues. My thing is if I can buy a nice used tank and it, it would really literally have to be dented in the agitator, not spin leaking everywhere for it to be non-functional, but you can usually find a decent tank 1500 two grand for a 500 gallon tank somewhere someone has a decent one you can always clean them up even if they have some holes by the legs you can just weld those or have somebody weld them and you're still going to be ahead and have a couple thousand dollars worth of getting a compressor you can get you know a gas um jenny compressor or a nine gallon you know 13 or whatever the cfms are really what you're looking for i, I can get one for five or six hundred bucks from harbor freight we use those units and I know I don't usually say names of where we're going to get them, but that's the only place you can get that central pneumatic, you know, compressor. It works fine. I'll buy a filter basket from wherever I can find the cheapest one that I want. I think I bought the last one from eBay. So, I mean, you can get it from there. And then I, I want a diaphragm pump. I, I want one for the pressure, for the power, for the ease of use. Uh, we have two. We have an inch and a half um, pump. It's a Wilden. And then we have another one inch pump, Aero, A-R-O. And they both have pumped about the same for me. The Aero pumps a little faster because it's only a one inch, but we filter our sealer before it even gets there. And it's always been fine for us as far as that goes as our backup unit. That's been on our backup unit now for a while. I got that pump for like 800 bucks. I think you're probably going to be close to that a little bit more probably for the Wilden. Um, you know, going to be a thousand or so, but it's pretty, pretty easy after that. You know, you can usually look at units and see the plumbing of how everything's supposed to go together. Um, you know, where your surge tank is going to go on top of the, the diaphragm pump, your surge tank is going to be up there with your hose coming this way and then a return going out to the top. So the nice thing about you and other people that ask this question is that they're looking for advice. They want to know how to do it. A lot of times I can send them a picture of my unit, and then all of a sudden that picture clicks. Oh yeah, it's just plumbing. This goes to this, this goes to this. I need this, this goes to that. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So, I mean, if you buy a used tank, man, for a couple grand, chances are you're going to get a nice tank. If it's manual agitation or whatever, the hydraulic agitation, you can figure two grand onto whatever, 2,500 for someone to even add it. The, I bought that gear reduction one because we can take that gear reduction off and just hook a a hydraulic pump up to that with a gear on it if we want and then later on make that one into hydraulic i actually bought that tank brand new off of a guy that makes them that i found in the facebook groups and it worked for us last year just fine so i mean i gave three grand for that 550 i think and then i used all the rest of the money to upgrade my parts and and do all that stuff so i mean i think you can get into it for that it's just figuring on how you can do it what i need to do and what i will do i'll commit to it we always break down our units each year. I'll go ahead and make a video of this goes to this, this goes to this, this goes to this, and of how to assemble it back together all the way from where we started to the top. And then people will kind of get an idea for it. But do you have any other questions, man? Because I know there's all kinds of tanks and, and different things out there and things that we should do or shouldn't do, or, you know, questions that you put something, and I've been guilty of this, you put something together and then you're like, dude, I should have never even did it that way. You know? So what, what else do you got for me, man? Yeah. So when you uh, get your tank and set up stuff set up, what else do you need to go with it to mm. like for, for a job? Like I wasn't even thinking about a squeegee before, but now I think about it. What happens when my system goes down like, and I got, you know, sealant over left over, I have to get a job done. So I guess I need to get a squeegee too, even though I wasn't planning on, on getting one. 
Yeah, yeah. So what we end up doing is when I plumb it together, I will actually, coming out of the tank, I'll have a T. So there'll be a valve. Right out of the tank, there's a valve in case I got to shut this sucker down so I don't get sealer everywhere. If a hose blows off or whatever, you can shut that tank and not all your sealer is going to flood out everywhere. After that valve, <clears throat> excuse me, it comes to a T. This side of the T goes to all my unit, everything, you know. This end of the T has a stopper in it. So I screw that in there. If everything else blows apart and goes crazy, I can always screw a hose into that back of that T, open that valve up, and sealer will come out onto the ground, and I can broom or squeegee, put it into buckets, do whatever I need to do to finish the job. So when you plumb, that's a, it's a, that's a major key. And I've been brave on our main unit and not had that lately because I'm so confident. We've had the same pump and same air compressor for two years. And we don't add a lot of sand. Everyone knows I don't add a lot of sand. But and with what we use right there, we, uh, we, we've never ran into any issues. And our one unit, our backup unit, we did add a lot of sand just because it was spec for a job that we had to do and still never had any issues. The basket clogs up a little bit quicker, yeah. but we never had any issues. So besides, you know, a relief that way, the other thing we plumb in is a water hose. So after that T, before it goes to our pump and motor, <clears throat> I'll have another T there reduced down to a water hose inlet. So I can hook a water hose to that sucker, shut my valve to the tank, and then run water through my entire system if I want to, out, out to the top of the tank, or you can take that hose off the top of the tank and just run it out onto the ground or whatever to clean that unit out. And I do that every, at the end of every year. We've never really had to use it during, but you never know. So I thought, well, it's easy to plumb in and you might as well keep it there. So that's another you know, little piece of advice. Just that valve, you want to open it up you know, and run water through there, start your compressor on low and have a low pump and it'll pump the water through there and clean everything out. Once you get to your filter basket and then you get to your pump and then from the top of that diaphragm pump, I'm just going to say diaphragm pump because that's what we use. If you don't have a diaphragm pump, it's going to go straight into your pump. You're going to, there's going to be an outlet from that outlet. You'll have another T that goes to your spray hose. And then off the top of that T is going to go return into your tank. If you have a diaphragm pump, you're going to have a T, but it's going to be aiming upwards to a surge tank. And you can make your own surge tank. You don't have to buy those big ones that look like water pump tanks or the big square ones. You can make your own out of three inch steel pipe and a cap and reduce it down. The surge tank actually takes the out of your spray wand so that you have a nice even spray while you're going. And from that, if that's up on top, we'll have a T this way. And this T will go to your to your spray hose but from the top of it will be a return going into your tank and then there'll be a valve here past it and a valve on top of that so you can shut your return off open the one to the spray one and that's what's nice about the diaphragm pump if it builds pressure it just stops if you have a plastic pump or a steel pump a trash pump and i don't really make them steel i guess red lion used to make one but mine blew apart in two days and that was the top of the line trash pump um, if you have that one, the pressure is going to have to go somewhere, dude. And what I always ran into is after so many times of shutting the off to the spray wand and then running and shutting off going in or opening into the tank so that we don't have excess pressure past the pump over time, that pressure ends up shooting the bearing into your, your, your motor. So you would actually end up with sealer into the crankcase after an amount of time and Sometimes those pumps still ran, man. I don't know how they ever ran for us, but they would run and you'd just start to see it in the oil. The oil started to get pasty and, and I knew that I knew when it, what was coming and we were going to have to replace it real soon. But I always like the diaphragm pump because you can shut all the pressure off and it just stops. There's no, it doesn't keep pumping if there's nowhere for it to go. So it just stops and then you can get back. There's no hurry. Open up to your return to your tank and choo, 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 it just starts going. So, I mean, for a little bit extra, you can be ahead of that. If it can be something you can grow into and not have any downtime, I think that that's maybe 
that might be the, you know, the idea you're going, you know, the route you want to go. There's all kinds of accessories, dude. We could talk accessories all day for outside of the actual spray unit, you know, and putting sealer on the ground. But for the, for the seal unit, you, you you're going to want that, you know, you're going to want, you're going to want it to be, to suit how you're going to work and what you think you're going to grow into. And I know you mentioned that you were going to grow into it. So I think that that's the idea. What do you think? You know, what do you think you, you want to shoot for knowing, you know, what we've talked about today? Um, definitely the diaphragm pump the way you, you were talking about it. Like I, I try to um, buy the best and cry once yeah. wherever possible like to a certain amount. Right. So if the, you know, if, it, if I can afford it and it's, it's doable, like, so I'm doing this on weekends. I already have an income that I, that I rely on. So to me, worst case scenario, this is a really good side hustle for as long as I need it to be. Yeah. I right? mean, so that's good. You know, for as long as you want to be, as long as you need it to be, I mean, you're going to invest in it and it's going to be a side hustle. And maybe, you know, maybe you can go a different route early on if you don't have the money to invest mm -hmm. right away. And because you're not using the unit as much, you'll be able to get by. But dude, it's so easy just to clean everything at the end of the year and know that everything's going to be fine when you hook it back up next year. You know, our Wilden, we've had three years now, our diaphragm pump. I've never even rebuilt it. And we use it every day. You know, yeah. when we're out, we, we, you know, I mean, every day when we're out, we're not like the guys down south who work it every day. But every day when we're out, we work double up here, you know, because we got six months to go ahead and get everything in. But, yeah, I think, I think you know, educating, asking yourself, dude, there's no – you know what? When I was real, real young and started rolling, I was like, no one needs to tell me what to do. I can figure this out on my own. And, uh, dude, I learned shit so damn hard. Now, the guys that are above me, I'm asking them every single question I can ask them. Even though I think we're doing great, I don't want to go forward making mistakes that are going to have downtime with me. And, you know, it's just one of those things where what fits your budget? What fits your goals? What fits whatever? You know, how can we put one together? Uh, I, I think we'll have no time, no problem finding units on the Facebook groups for sale that are used units or tanks. We have one of our tanks for sale right now. And I mean, it's just one of those things where there's always going to be someone trying to upgrade and do something. There's going to be guys that are going to try to manufacture tanks and make tanks as well. And the main thing is so much the tank. It's not so much the tank. It's getting your sealer on the ground efficiently. You know, just getting sealer on the ground is the start of it, of it all. So sometimes if you don't do things right, the pump and everything else that you got yeah. may be less efficient than just pumping the sealer out of a freaking hose onto the ground so that we can put sealer on the ground and start income coming into our business so that we have money to work with. So that's, that's kind of the major key. You know, when we talk about accessories, we talk about a squeegee box, you know, a broom box. What types of brooms are going to use? Squeegees, pump up cans, uh, crack melt, you know, crack sealant melters, uh, the, the different variations of those things, using cold crack filter, crack filler, whatever, you know, there's plenty of options. But for this one, I thought this was a great point for you and I to kind of hash this out. And I, I really appreciate you being on here and doing the video and it not being an official blacktop banter podcast, but just you and I hashing out how the heck do we even decide what to do? You know, yeah. even me choosing what unit I wanted next for our trailer unit and our, we're getting a yellow unit, a, a, a decent size one, a 700 gallon. I've been waiting for this thing for three or four years. So I've been, you know, and now, now that we're kind of quarantined, it's on hiatus, which of course it would be. Why wouldn't it be for me? So we're going to, you know, hopefully get to it. But even that, there's so many options for me to choose, you know, like, which compressor do I want? Do I finally be able to get to get that blue compressor that I've always wanted with this thing that I don't have to worry about again? Or am I going to have to stick to this one? So, I mean, there's plenty of options, plenty of variations. There's no real right or wrong way. The only wrong way is not getting sealer on the ground and getting your jobs done, you know? So you learn some of that stuff and some stuff might be choice. You know, I might like, like something that you don't like, you know, a lot of guys like the hose rollers. I hate hose rollers. Okay. to me you know they just take take time i'm if i find the right one you know if i have an electric one maybe my guys like the electric one because they won't have to sit there and hand crank that sucker but for me i still prefer two hooks on the side of my tank and 
I'm just running my hose real quick up and on there, you know, and I don't know. A lot of stuff's preference, but some stuff is functional, you know, and then to go back over the functional stuff for us, filter pot is number one. You know, get that on there however you can get it on there and buy a good one. Spend a few hundred bucks and get a good one. Our, our filter basket that we have in filter pot, I've had for six years on our main unit. I'll never have to replace that thing rolling. It's pretty basic, dude. It's just a, a steel basket in a steel casing. That's my next question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How often you replace those things, but I guess you don't need to. No, we have, we, we actually bought one basket one other time when we were spraying the sand. And I drilled some of the holes out bigger so that we didn't have to stop as often. And we just cranked the pressure up and it pumped through there just fine. So, I mean, the filter basket, you don't have to replace as often. Um, some other guys might be able to comment better on the diaphragm um, replacement kit in there. But from what I've understood, we've never had to replace one. It's pretty simple. The diaphragm things have two clamps, both diaphragms on each side. The clamps come off, the, they're nitrile. Um, diaphragms in there with two balls take those things out replace the balls replace those diaphragms clamp it back on and you're rocking and rolling again so i mean i think they're like 80 uh, don't quote me on that one i think they're like 80 bucks 100 bucks for a replacement kit so if i use i know a guy the reason i bought the wilden diaphragm pump is i know a guy that has had his for 10 years and has never never had a replacement diaphragm in there so i mean for 10 years i was like pfft efficiency yes please you know it just it seems to make sense so hopefully that was all insightful you got any other questions man oh yeah man i have so many questions we could talk for like three right. hours hit, so. me with some, hit me with some if you have any all right sure so brand new guy starting out what's the best way to cut a, a driveway the what? Cut it? In? yeah oh okay i've always broomed you know i've always broomed for cutting in and we use uh, 80, 70 tip most of the time. And I use steel tips. I never really like the ceramic ones. Guys can hate me. Maybe I don't have enough pressure with my, uh, roll air compressor. That could be an issue, but we've always just used the roll one. I've used steel tips. They've covered fine. The pressure has been fine. So I haven't changed anything. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Roland. Okay. Mm -hmm. Try yeah. it. You can try some stuff, but there's no use to fix it. If it's not broken. Um, I've always cut in. So what we do is we have five gallon buckets. We have trim brushes. I actually use car wash brushes. The bristles are yeah. a little bit softer. They're not the, you know, the twill kind, I guess, or horse hair. Yeah. For me, those are just way too soft. And I, my guys slosh it around. And I like to pump into the buckets, dip the brush in there, trim out a little bit, at least one band. New guys, I try to get them to do two just so that I make sure it covers. And then we'll actually take the tip off of our spray one pump sideways along, excuse me, where we trimmed out with those two passes. Those two passes will probably get you about a foot width. And then I'll just pump some along there. And then we'll take our pro coater, our three foot pro coater, which is the black brush that you can just slide the refills out and put the refill back in and tighten it down. And then I'll just run along and trim along with that and edge out with that. So we have a good probably four feet. And then we just fire it up and I'll tilt the wand back when I spray, open it up and spray at myself essentially but we're covering you know we're covering without splashing anywhere i'm i'm a big fan of trimming out far because i've had clogs that will come into the tip and they'll shoot a direction that's not even within the fan range it'll shoot straight that way you know so then if it does do that i'm spraying a stream on the garage unless i've trimmed out far enough to where if it does happen it's still going to hit the, the asphalt so Got the guys hate me sometimes because I'll make them trim out ten feet, man. And if there's wind and and stuff like that, I just do it. I I want to be efficient. I would rather not risk it, but still get my biscuit, if you know what I mean. So yeah. that's the route I go. Have you tried uh, the trigger wands over the um, ball? I haven't tried the trigger wands. I don't. I don't prefer them. I just. I figure we're pumping aggregate through there, and. I've always used the, the quarter turn ball valve. I just don't want anything to fail. And that, those have never, ever, ever, ever failed me. So I know that I can just shut it off. But things that I've had with triggers before, all of a sudden you'll be like, what the heck, man? Yeah. And it could still be spraying. 
you know, so you have to yell back, Hey, stop, which not, which isn't a big deal. But if you're by yourself, it might be a big deal. Yeah. How are you going to set this wand down? If it's pump and sealer to run back to the truck, you know, you could put a valve be before your trigger, you know, that's, that wouldn't be too big of a deal, I guess. So I've never done it, but that would be a safety. If you want to use a trigger one, if you prefer that, put a ball valve below your trigger. There, we, you and I just came up with this. And we got <laughs> innovation. Put a ball valve below there, man. And if your trigger messes up, shut your ball valve off. So, okay. Last question. So, do you use totes or do you use drums for your your sealer or? We just get a bulk. Yeah. So we we'll, we'll, we take our units in to Seal Master in Madison. Okay. And. I, just, I don't have that option really though. I know, I know, I know. So that stinks. One thing you can do is to get it in there, you know, man, there's been times when we've had units break down and we have to get it from point A to point B. The truck broke down and uh, we, we only had gravity feed on that truck. We didn't have a pump and motor and I would have to pump it into buckets, five gallon buckets and then move. It was actually 400 gallons, dude. So think about that, you know, all these buckets. What I always planned on doing is if we ever had to get to a point where we had to pump out of totes or whatever into there was that water hose inlet that I was telling you about. I was going to hook a water hose to that, run that into my, um, 55 gallon drum or my tote or whatever, shut the valve off going into my tank, start my pump and motor up, pump it through that water hose into my, my pump and my whole unit and just return it into my tank until my tank is filled up and then shut everything down, shut that valve off to the water hose unit. And you should be able to pump your sealer in that way. If you have a diaphragm pump for sure. I mean, even if you have a regular pump, you can put a T there if there's space and put, uh, a valve there and reduce that down to the water hose size and you could pump over to there. Now, if you don't want to use that water hose one, remember when I said that we have one where you can just hook up the gravity feed? Yeah. Just hook that thing up and stick that inside of your 55 gallon drum or stick that inside of your tote. Make it, I don't know, 12, 15 feet long, whatever the heck it needs to be and put it in there. The nice thing about diaphragm pumps is you don't really have to prime them, man. There's, you know, if they run dry, as soon as you have liquid there again, some something for it to siphon, it's just going to go and suck that sucker right out of there. So if you use that that outlet that we were talking about for if you have to use gravity feed, hook a two inch hose into there and then put that into your or an inch hose or inch and a half and put that into your drum or your tote and then it'll pump right up into your tank, man. So that's kind that's kind of nice, dude, because you'll yeah. have like if you have a three hundred gallon unit, you can pump you know, four 55 gallon drums over there, five of them if you wanted to, and there'd be empty drums there in no time and your tank will be full. So, yeah. you know, that will be a good idea. I think that will be an easy way for it to work. Okay. You all cool? Yeah, man. Thank you so much. Really hey, no appreciate. worries, man. Always. So I imagine we're going to be texting a lot even more, <laughs> but this was definitely great for me. This helps me out a lot. So I appreciate you being on here, man, because for me, I, I probably get this question twice a week, you know, three times a week. And I used to have a copy and paste kind of thing because I just stuck the one thing. I said, well, I figure if I just tell them this, yeah, they'll do this and they'll be safe. But now we're getting so many variables and there's so many options that, you know, I kind of like to explore all the options myself. I want to know more. Heck, you and I came up with an innovation before the trigger right here. And somebody else probably like, yeah, Marv, I thought of that 15 years ago. We've been doing it that way forever. But we don't know because they never put content out. You know? yeah, exactly you have something that innovates that we could use Roland or I, this guy or me, like we want it. We want to know how to do it. So put some content out for us, everybody. All right, Roland. Thanks a lot, man. Stay, right. stay safe up there. You know, <laughs> I hope everybody abides by what we're supposed to do. So you and I can get rolling and get working. So, all right, man. Thanks a lot. Hey, Cheers. no worries. Cheers. Yeah, first, yeah, first, yeah.